Welcome to the Thunder Nerds. I am Frederick Philip Von Weiss. You are consuming the Thunder Nerds, a conversation for the people behind the technology that love what they do and do web good. Uh, just a quick reminder, if you like the show, give us some love on the old iTunes, subscribe for pennies a day on the uh, YouTubes, whatnot, and uh, that'd be really cool. Uh, with that being said, without any further ado, let's go ahead and welcome our guest. Uh, and it's going to be guest plural. We got one guy showing up in a minute, but let's go ahead. We're going to uh, welcome uh, in this episode podcast rock stars. Tra uh, of Travenlos. Uh, at the moment, we have Carlos Man Mantoya, and in the moment uh, or, or two, we're going to have Travis Nielsen. Welcome to the show, guys. What's up? And What's up, boy? Boy! <laughs> You're waiting to say that, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kind of. <laughs> As Travis was there, I would have uh, gave him the uh, row, row, row. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, it's so good. What's up, man? Thanks for having us on the show. And Travis is currently commuting his way here. Nice. Where? How far is? Uh, how far away does he live from you? Uh, he li he's not that far. He lives about fifteen minutes in the car. Oh, dude, that's really nice. So, yeah. best friends, only fifteen minutes away. I love it. Yeah, yeah. I have a I have a boosted board, and I can get there in a full charge, and it dies right when I roll into his front door. Can it be? Can it be any more perfect? I love that. <laughs> yeah, hey, so what's up with you guys? What have you? Uh, what have you guys been doing new? What's uh, you know? Mm -hmm. Obviously, you've been uh, uh, interviewing a lot of people. You had um, who isn't on there? You had Alex. You had Adrian. You guys are uh, interviewing Cha Cha Cha. You know, you're having a lot of other podcasts on the show. What, what what's going on? Yeah. So you know, we have our usual podcast that we do, but that kind of just ended up happening, kind of not on purpose. Because every time that I travel or Travis travels, then the way that our podcasts work, if you don't, if you don't listen, haven't listened, is we release every week. Wait, he's here. Hey, I heard the door. The grand entrance. What's up? That's my music for you. He's gonna sit right here. Hold on. Here he goes. Here he goes. Oh, it's a video chat. I know a video. I hope you uh, dressed up. You got some bows yeah, in your hair. Got to uh, put on my makeup. <laughs> oh, look at pretty. It's Travis Nielsen, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing, sir? Oh, good. I'll take this off so I can have a nice, beautiful white on red on my shiny forehead. It's nice, so, very shiny and pretty. I like it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Von Chooch just uh, <laughs> just uh, just <laughs> introed us. Okay. <laughs> and he, uh, hello everyone. He just asked, you know, what's up? Where are you? Where are you doing right now? We've been interviewing a lot of people. What's up with that? Yeah. What's up with that? We have been interviewing yeah. people. Yeah, you have. Yeah, you had uh, Adrian, Alex on. You guys are bringing in some people from some other podcasts, like Cha Cha Cha, which is a really cool show. I mean, what's so? What's going on? Oh, uh, I think I think we we talk to other people. We're in an open relationship, Los and I, <laughs> and we we talk to people when um, <clears throat> you know when we can't we can't connect to each other. I think that's kind of what it is. And, yeah. also, and also, like, just happenstance. Sometimes we three-way it, you know? Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> See, I feel like that's one of those parts where uh, he would have edited it out and that, that would have made the cut, but but I love it. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes we, uh, you know, tag team it. No worries. Um, but Tag team's that, back yeah. again. That's what I hear. Yeah, dude, tell, tell us about your show. Your show has gone through some stuff, you know? Mm. You made yeah. I mean, we we started out with um, uh, just being a, a, a tech podcast, and we started to do uh, kind of that deep dive into different shows. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I, we, I think we all kind of felt like we we're getting lost in the uh, great big pool of those kinds of shows. Like, I didn't want to do something where uh, somebody like um, – I don't know, uh, Shop Talk was doing, for instance, right? Because they do it far better than we do it. And I, I, I'm i not trying to compete with Chris Coyer. Um, But also, too, I, I really enjoy people. I, I love people. I find people to be the most interesting books I could read and digest and learn from. So we took a approach where we started to go down uh, an organic path of inviting our friends on the show. It wasn't planned out. It just kind of happened that way. And from then on, we just became more of a conversation with the people behind the technology that love what they do and do web good. 
I like that that pitch. <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> love what they do and do it good. And do it good. And and the heart. Uh, I yeah. just I just hit him with some oils. Essential oils on my nose. I got essential oils right up on his nostrils. Really? What's 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 with the essential oils in your nose? Uh, he just swiped them on my face, and I can't really breathe that well. <laughs> I don't know why he did it. I feel like you've been baptized or something. Uh, you guys been watching The Crown? Did you just get like you're now the queen? The holy oils in the head, on the breast, and in the nose. I didn't know it worked that way. I forgot about the nose thing. I mean, Mount Elizabeth is a weirdo, right? That's funny, man. Yeah, so that's kind of how <laughs> that's kind of how that happened with all the you know, uh, doing, doing that with, with our interviews. And so it makes sense that you guys have also kind of like transitioned to the people that you want to talk to. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I, I love talking to people. Um, thus you gentlemen right here. Like uh, we, we really enjoy having, uh, a, a nice conversation about what you do, but what makes you do what you do? You know, we, we want to know what you had for breakfast and all that kind of stuff, like all the uh, nitty gritty, if you will. So yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. Hey, you know what I wanted to ask you about is the the quick um, uh, not elephant. What's the term? Beard in the room is uh, <laughs> we uh, <laughs> we 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 had guys on the show back in um, probably the same month last year, and we were asking you guys about uh, when you're going to get together and do the beard picture, and uh -huh. um, and that's where I had the inspiration of doing the uh, the beard photo. I hope you guys like that. That's that thing it. right there. Everybody can see that. Can you see that? I showed that around the office. It was it was a good. It was a win. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, yeah it, it it jumped in my head, and I was like, "Hey Siri, <laughs> remember this shit." And then like, <laughs> <laughs> we look like hillbillies. <laughs> no lie. Hillbillies? No. How do you get hillbillies out of that? I just. The hat, man, <laughs> and then like the bald head with the, the long beard. It looks super like, uh, like, hillbilly. okay, m m maybe not hillbillies, but maybe let's go like, uh, the folk kind of flavor, like, you know, like kind of hip and, you know, yeah, listening to, uh, some yeah. stuff outside yeah. and there's lanterns. You're in a bunch of haze and hoes. No, no, no haze, no hoes. Nothing <laughs> like that. No, no just kind of yeah. stuff, you know, it's, it's I'll, kind of I'll, like an arcade fire kind of feel. How long did this take you? I'll take that. Really? How long well, that take took me like two hours to do. And like the whole time, I was literally like cracking up the whole time. I was like, oh, this is fucking funny. Take, do you take photographs of your own pubes and then and stitch them in here? <laughs> that was going to be a yeah, secret surprise. I wasn't going to tell anybody, but yes, absolutely true. <laughs> that was the Easter egg. Those are pubes. <laughs> <laughs> and if you look really close, there's one little crab there. <laughs> oh too, far? too far? Sorry, everybody. There was a line I crossed it. It would be, though, if you think about it. <laughs> if you think about it. <laughs> you yeah. were talking about Easter eggs. I went to crabs. Who knows? This made me so happy when I saw it. It was good. I couldn't even for about a good two days. He couldn't even. <laughs> he couldn't even. <laughs> couldn't even. Awesome. Yeah. Good. That's, that's one of my uh, purposes in life is to bring joy to uh, people via beards and we're getting close to november so oh november so it, it all correlates right uh, i've never taken part in that i i suggest that you do uh that's a very uh, serious issue and it's a fun way to uh to bring a little levity and uh get people inspired to help out what about the follicle challenge though it's, uh, what about it it's exclusive to the men <laughs> that can grow beards Wow, no, no, it's not exclusive to men. Uh, I, just so you know, there's also the uh, women join in and it's a uh, leg hair contest too. I didn't know that. I oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we do that at our office. Oh, that, that way I can take part. You can. <laughs> I got some leg hair. I got, I got, going on. I got some leg hair. I got some going on down there. <laughs> Dude, right, so tell us about your audience. Like who who jumps in and who's talk, who, like, who is the audience? Our public. audience is a conglomerate of designers, developers, influencers, and decision makers. So we have people that are in the marketing realm a lot. We got a lot of people that are in the um, product design and UX realm. So it's a, a fairly wide funnel of the people you would think of in our industry. And I'll argue a lot of times that marketing people and user experience people uh, kind of have the same uh, objectives as far as leading people down a path and converting those people 
and it, one way is a conversion and the other way is an experience that helps them make that conversion. So it's, 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 it's a pretty wide funnel, as I said, but within a small, uh, that, that group in our, um, in our industry. And I was wondering if you could, and I know you were looking at that note in the, uh, in the doc, I was wondering, uh, just, just briefly, like a quick three to five minutes, if you guys, for the people that, um, uh, sadly don't know about your show, which is an amazing show. If you could just share a little bit with us about what your show is and, and what you guys do. You want to tell you? Sure. Uh, so I'm Trav, of course, and this is Los. And Los is my best friend. And our show is called Late Nights with Trav and Los. And so literally we talk late into the evenings. Um, and the idea is that we're going to explore new ideas. We're gonna, I'm going to teach him. He's going to teach me. I'm going to argue against him. He's going to refute my ideas um, and it's targeted mostly at creative professionals and we argue over concepts we share secrets and oftentimes we interview our like our industry heroes that's the pitch that's it <laughs> <laughs> mostly like if you boil it all down is really is my opportunity to hang out with Los who's one of the most intelligent and talented insightful people I know and I can yeah. do that on a regular schedule and with intent in a microphone, it's great. It's that's what I really get get out of it. Yeah, I, I believe what you guys were talking about before. It's, it's a way that you could have that uh, scheduled time to be able to talk. And you guys thought, you know what? Let's let's record these conversations because we're having uh, a lot of value that 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 is coming from this that we could share. Absolutely. That's yeah, I th that, that's one of the reasons why I started too, is because I I've never uh, never really had too much time to hang out with my buddy Jonathan. We used to hang out all the time when we uh, went to the same dojo, but you know uh, that kind of uh, ended abruptly after I had my double hernia surgery. So now we're uh, getting back together and we're doing this and we're having a lot of fun. Yeah, mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah it's a great great way to meet other people too. Like having guests on, uh, digging into like what makes them tick, and for some reason, I have, I really don't understand it. But when you put a microphone in somebody's face, they immediately their inhibitions kind of melt, and they become super vulnerable. And you're able to like be like, "But why did you make that life decision?" And they'll be like, "Well, let me tell you." And then they'll just say this incredibly inspiring or heartfelt or tragic thing, and you're just like, "Wow, that like now I know what people are like a little bit more." Yeah, it's kind of a vehicle for uh, authenticity, isn't it, in a way? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think there's that intention. Like when you put a microphone in front of somebody, you're, you're saying like, get ready to bury your soul. Yeah. It's weird. Yeah, I've seen that. And it's, uh, it's cool to experience because where else are you going to get that? You know, there's no room for small talk. Why are you going to put walls up and, and, and kind of hide behind them? Because, yeah, like, like we, we only got 20 minutes. Yeah. There's no small talk here. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't. I don't really care to talk about the weather, although we're going to have some crazy weather. But yeah, let's let's get to the uh, the the meat and potatoes and have a honest uh, conversation in this moment. Have a open relationship and dialogue back and forth, and it's just you know human and human. I think a lot of times people <clears throat> put up a cardboard tank and they're afraid to let anybody know that they're driving around in a cardboard tank. If you get a little bit of water on there, kind of boop 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 boop. Oh, uh, it's me, just me behind here, right? Right. Cardboard tank. I like that. Yeah. yeah. That's a good Thanks. Issue. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah, I think so. One of my lyrics from a long time ago. You know, um, what? I, speaking of all this uh, and, your, and your show, our show, whatnot, I think um, a good theme for our conversation tonight is community. And uh, we'll, we'll dive a little bit into that, too. And uh, I'd like to start off that with uh, a, a quote. And I think you guys said this too, and I think a, a lot of people say this, and forgive me if this is a common quote, but I believe, I believe it was Cindy Lauper who said, if you, uh, if you wanna go fast, go, go alone. But if you wanna go far, go with friends, and girls just wanna have fun. And I think that resonates with a lot of us, especially <laughs> the, the first part. I'm not sure about the last part. You know, she's a little confused. But 
like, that's like a Chinese proverb. And you're like, I guess I'll have fun. Oh, yeah. yeah. I think that also equals out to a haiku, 17 <laughs> syllables. I'm not sure. Who knows? It's, it's going to take a scientist to count that for years. But anyway, it's a good point, right? It's um, like if you want to do even up, let's let's make it more relevant to what we're uh, currently doing, like a podcast. Right. You know, I, I could do this by myself, and I could go a lot faster. And then I could just talk. I could take the Mark Maron route and you know have guests pepper here and there and just really just talk about how much I love my cats. But you know, I could also invite my friends and have more of a uh, different perspective here, there that uh, blends. And I think a lot of people are afraid to uh, have different uh, opinions around them as far as even if it's your, and I won't go into it, but like your political party or your religion or whatnot, because those things are tied to ego. And when people's egos get threatened, they'll kind of um, tie a rope and say, uh, that that's enough. I, I don't want to hang out with you. I don't want to follow you. Uh, I don't want to know anything else. Blah, 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 blah. I don't see. Right. So uh, having that uh, group of people around you in community is so important for your own growth, but also to contribute, whether that's, again, a podcast, open source community. If you are get involved via Slack, Spectrum, whatnot, what have you, like it's uh, it's so valuable for yourself. I know if I could speak to for me to learn uh, from from all these different people in, in the community and entities. Uh, just like yourselves. Yeah. Yeah. I Retort. Like, I like that you led. <laughs> signal. <laughs> no, I like that you led with that quote, right? Fast, go alone, uh, trying to go far, go together. But the thing is, you can go fast nowhere alone, right? It's it's easy to go and get lost by yourself, right? Which which is great, but like if you're going fast to to nowhere, like what's the point, you know? And so. That's kind of what aren't we all going fast to nowhere though? Really? No, no, <laughs> no. I mean, I've been to Hoboken, New Jersey. I'm not yeah. going fast anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. <clears throat> yeah, and so so it seems like you going together, you can go farther in a more appropriate direction or a more uh, focused direction, and that's that's what I've gotten out of Travis and I's publishing partnership and friendship is that I can go far with him but it's in the right direction as well oh that's good right that's good yeah and i like to say a little bit about just uh the people who get value from listening mm. i mean i know that in my experience i get a lot of strength and like mm. solidarity and advice and just kind of like comfort from from understanding other people and like how they tick and how they work. Even it's even if like the story or the interviewee or the situation is completely divorced from the details of my own life. Um, just, it, it really opens me up to have uh, appreciation and respect and concern for people who, you know, who are not like me, but, but also we have these kind of like, uh, what are they called, echo chambers, where you kind of listen to the podcast you, you agree with. I think you mentioned that earlier. Um, and yeah, th there's something about that, that that gives you strength and motivation to do what you know is right. And maybe, you know, like maybe you're listening to like, like I don't know, you, you want to be a, a runner or something, but you can't get off the couch. And then you, you kind of listen to a few podcasts and you hear an inspiring story. And you're like, you know what? You know, maybe today, you know, and it just kind of works with you that you find strength in other people's stories and, and other people's uh, uh, experiences. Yeah, you know, that that makes me think of, um, we had uh, Ben Callahan from uh, Sparkbox on a few episodes ago, and he he told this amazing story on, uh, on a TED Talk where he was uh, going to uh, the forest. What was it? The Redwood Forest, I believe, in California. Yeah. And, uh, you know, those big, giant, giant trees, right? You know what I'm talking about? That's where we live, man. We live in Redwood City. <laughs> we live in Redwood City, California. <laughs> so I'm going to say, yes, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so these trees. I have one in my backyard. Yeah, there's one. <laughs> Do you know how far the roots go? Yeah, miles. Miles down and miles across. Nope. Well, well here, here's the thing. The, the roots go down 10 feet. They're shallow. They're oh, is shallow. It? And okay. they go out yeah. like hundreds of feet. And the reason is that they need each other. The trees hold each other up. They intertwine their roots and they hold each other up. And that strength 
gives them this ability to be strong and reach those heights. So I think that's a great kind of um, story and narrative for a community. Mm -hmm. And I think I think you guys uh, reflect that as well within what you're doing. And, and the reason I bring this up too is um, if we could kind of segue into what you're uh, um, getting into soon, which is the uh, the Tin Roof Media Network, right? Yeah. <laughs> Tin Roof Media Network. Tin Roof Media Network. <laughs> yeah. I believe uh, this uh, comes from a tin roof on said cantina, correct? <laughs> yeah, we record in the cantina. And uh, it's this rickety old tin roof, and the posts that are holding it up are, are infested by termites. And at some point, it's, it's going to fall. fall. <laughs> <laughs> Shanty shack, it's leaning one way. And it's so busted. One day, <laughs> one day we'll be recording. It's going to land on our heads. Hopefully, <laughs> that would be. Great. Well, that would be a great episode. <laughs> yeah. Is that episode three hundred? Is that how we uh, kick it off? Yeah. We're, we're hoping for it. We'll do some demolition, <laughs> like, like light fireworks. <laughs> It would be uh, the quintessential moment when uh, Tree Cat lands on the roof and roof said fall. <laughs> Tree Cat. <laughs> I like it when you know that somebody listens to the yeah. show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Tree Cat. Tree Cat will make a, quite an entrance there. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the point. That's the point of the of the network, right? Is is the podcast industry is still young. Uh, when it comes to the amount of ad dollars that are spent it, compared to TV and internet. It's, insanely disproportionate um podcasting gets one to two billion in this year in 2017 2018 and ad spend and tv and internet you're looking at north of 300 billion 500 billion wow right and so there's such a it's such a young industry and if you think about the amount of attention of it's podcasts, way more captivating it's way more captivating and you get it's about intimate you just put it in your ear hole just put it right in your you ear hole. i usually insert it in my ear hole yeah yeah. yeah, so you get, you know, you get these Take it out, put it back. commute time and like before bedtime and shower time, which comes about four hours of, of, of the day that you have someone's attention or could have someone's attention. Yeah. So I'm long on podcasts and as an industry and it's taking, it's taking its sweet time to kind of proliferate across the kind of pop culture. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> because we've been doing it for two, three years now, we kind of figured out kind of like a good cadence, like what works and what doesn't work for us. There's a lot of other people, apps and services that are making it easier, making podcasting more accessible. And so we want Simple to cast simple cast or uh, what was the one that um, Alex bumper Trent, bumper. Yeah, bumper. Oh yeah. Love bumper. Yeah. Bumper. And so we, uh, I think there's a lot of knowledge that we can use to kind of help build up these other podcasts that want to join. And in return, as we grow together, then we start making money together, right? And so it's kind of like an incentive to join a network and help build it from the ground up. But also at some point, there's going to be a lot of dinero in this industry, right? So we'll grab it, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Also, when you shoot out Breaker, Breaker is amazing. Breaker, yes. Breaker is another one. I think I have it. Um, yeah, if you don't, it's it's really cool to be able to see what uh, like-minded people are listening to, your friends are listening to, and it's very easy to uh, socialize everything with inside of Breaker. Oh, very that, nice app. you heard of it. Yeah, I have Breaker. Oh, yeah, yeah. look it up. You're going to love it. It's Just, funny how many people that <clears throat> I talk to within um, age groups of – 25 to 45 that don't even know how to listen to a podcast. Yeah. yeah I, I found out. And, and I mean, it's not a lot, but it's, it's quite an interesting number. Like it, when I, sometimes when I tell them, Oh, I have a show and they listen to it. They're like, how do I, how do I listen to a podcast? Yeah. Yeah. And I said, you have an iPhone and they usually say yes. And I'm like, open up your podcast <laughs> app. Most takes it out of their hands and yeah, and, and subscribes to Trav and Lux. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm going to do from now on. Hold on. Let me show you how you do this. Let me open up this app. Let me download Breaker. Okay, I got yeah. another follower. And you subscribe to my YouTube channel. Oh, just like this. Hold on. Yeah, yeah. No, no joke. I'll grab someone's phone and I'll take it. I'm like, That's us. And you just subscribe. I'm like, Now you're a listener. 
you know, <laughs> so, yeah, just press play. Just press play. That's how you listen to it. It's on your phone. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. But hey, yeah. could, could you could you go into and I I don't know um, uh, what you want to talk about uh, per se uh, with with uh, Tin Roof and what it is and what your vision of it is. We we say that and we've heard that it is a a network but what does that mean like for, for somebody that's maybe a novice does that mean that it, you know you have uh, this podcast this podcast and this podcast and it forms the justice league of podcasts like what does that look like and who who are you fighting yeah yeah so the idea of a network is a way that, okay let's let's take it back the way to get ad revenue on a podcast is to have subscribership or or something that you can point at it's like hey look there's enough people that are paying attention that value what we're saying. So at this point, you know, we can present a message that we find valuable as well to our audience, and then they have your attention, the ad dollar spent. But to get scale, to get that level of scale, kind of getting the, uh, like you can say Ford or uh, some bigger companies like Toyota, you can think, I'm thinking about cars or whatever, I don't know why, or Gap or whatever. To get them on a podcast to spread enough value, you need, to, you need to be able to launch an episode and six weeks out, have 50,000 plus people tune in and listen to that episode, right? <clears throat> so how do you do that as an individual? You build a community, a consistent voice, and it can take you from two to 10 years. Um, sure, yeah, and you have some uh, uh, quite a lot of um, level of, of metrics then to, to, to communicate out to them right away, right? Right, right. So there's one way. The other way is to uh, incubate a few podcasts, create partnerships with other podcasts, and clone this, for this partnership in the form of a media network. And then collectively, now you have something that you can write home about. Collectively, you can have the 50,000 plus listeners that you need. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. so, so everybody can have like, uh, you know, their, their share of the, the proceeds. Um, but also there's like, again, that social component where now you can lean on each other and say like, hey, what do you think about this idea that we're trying out? Or like, how did you guys get this, you know, message across or build this community or what tools do you, are you using? And can you introduce me to this person or, or whatever it is, you know, and it, it works out really well, I think. Yeah, you know, I think that kind of echoes out one of the shows that you guys did a while ago. I think it was you, Travis, where you're talking about Hemingway and how it was uh, very serendipitous of how he joined this group of riders. Does that ring a bell to you? Absolutely. Yeah, and, and if he didn't have that community, he might not have got the same recognition for his writing because obviously there's uh, a lot of people out there with heart, passion, and talent, and maybe their voice doesn't get out there, didn't get out there, I mean, who knows how many uh, Einsteins that there were in the world, there are in the world, but don't have a avenue to communicate publicly. Absolutely, absolutely. It's kind of a weird, a weird sobering idea that it's not how good you are or even how, work you, how, how hard you work. But a lot of it comes down to just who you know and what you're willing to do with that relationship. Socializing. Was it was it you guys that I heard this? It was like uh, I think you were talking about um, doing your work twenty percent of the time, but socializing your work eighty percent of the time. Was that was that something I heard from you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm still struggling with that, but <laughs> but that is the idea. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's a difficult one, but it's yeah. There's so many people that are better than you, on par with you, but if you don't actually get your stuff out there and say what you did, uh, you know then you know you get lost right yeah, so what <laughs> and, and and on the flip it's pretty hard right because i like I, I i don't know uh <laughs> like i try really hard to be a good socializer but i know that there's other creators that are better than me <laughs> at, at socializing yeah but not better at me at production yeah and i'm like i'm like well yeah but but you nobody saw what i did but it was better you know <laughs> and, and like, it, but the hard truth is that they win. Yeah. Yeah. Well, not, I mean, maybe some things they win, but maybe some things they, they don't win. Cause they're, I, I don't want to get all Sesame street on you, but there's only one <laughs> you, right? I mean, and all, you're the only you that does the you that you 
do or whatever children's book because I know you have kids and you probably read the same kind of books every day but you know what I mean that's the Scooby-Doo moral to the story is that you're the only one that could do what you do and if you as long as you're getting that out there you're gonna get some eyes on it right yeah the, 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 the point is that if nobody sees it or if the right people don't see it, then the work that I did is not going to be as valuable in the eye of um, the market or or the the, the, the the targeted audience, right? Sure, everything I do is beautiful. <laughs> everything I do is wonderful. No doubt. <laughs> but, you know, oh, if I don't get it in <laughs> front of the right people, then it's then it's not meeting its intended need. There, there's, this, there's this point when you make art where it becomes something entirely different than the brush stroke or the music note or the pixel that you placed and when it's it's understood and interpreted by another person and it creates this communication between the two of you that is the that is the highest place that art can in my opinion that art can achieve um, and if you don't put it out there, that, that moment will never happen, even if it's like the Mona Lisa. Sure. And, and to add to that, is it, is it evergreen? You know, is it going to be something that you look at, um, you know, th this month, next month, and you appreciate it for the comments or quality of its time? Or do you look at it in three years and go, oh, that was interesting for the, for whatever, you know, th there's a piece that's not, you know, has some weird skeuomorphic thing that you did five years ago that I'm not interested in looking at? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's a great question. I think, I think the way that, I think a healthy way to approach that is to accept that everything is of its own time. And only the things that speak to uh, timelessness will be time, timeless. So for example, um, if I'm focusing on getting my drop shadow perfect, Right, that's a timeful thing. Like it's going to be a trend, you know. Like whatever, my my border radius is on point. <laughs> but if I if instead I'm not speaking to that type of craft or that type of execution of a trend, but I'm speaking to the humanity of what I'm intending to do, helping a person uh, achieve enlightenment through uh, you know this this web interface, which, which <laughs> sounds really funny, but like. But for example, um, I've been listening to Headspace a lot and doing like practicing my meditation, and like the design keeps changing, you know. And it's always good; it's always clever, and it's always like fresh. But what really is happening there is that I'm interfacing with a product or an idea or a person, and it's changing the way I live day to day. And and I think that you can look at at this one piece of art in two ways. And I think that the the latter, wherein you're saying like, what is the human component to it what is the larger story of it? it that's what makes it timeless and if i was going to say oh look at this app it's really cool it has a circle and the play button is actually a circle and it turns into a wave when it's playing that's time full it, it, it's going to be gone next month sure and then you you embrace those those elements of the uh the timefulness mm -hmm. and, and talk about that and not shy away from it yeah, yeah. Timefulness is okay because it leads you to have like a fun experience. Um, but this is like, this is what we get to when we talk about the difference between um, a user experience designer and a, uh, a UI designer, right? Mm -hmm. and, uh, people often say UI UX, like as if it's like one slur of a word, but it's <laughs> what well, it is for HR people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, when I was being hired, they were like, are you a visual designer or an interaction designer? I was like, I'm a, is a, I'm a designer. <laughs> I'm a product designer. How about that? <laughs> yeah, and they're like, no, you have to fit in a box. <laughs> uh, so you can also code action script, right? <laughs> action script. Action <laughs> script too. <laughs> oh my life. Uh, wow. Yeah. So I think um, what what was my point there? I was talking about. Well, you, we were talking about timelessness and um, things within a time, and I think the way your your kind of your point is ending up is that if you keep on putting stuff out there, it's not about creating things um, that are, you know, here's my collection of things and consume that. It's about keeping keep keep on publishing. Yeah, yeah. Your the story can turn from being about the thing you made to the way you make it, and then from the way you make it. To the, the person who made it 
and then from the person who made it and to it can turn into the way that we celebrate making things or why we make things you know it doesn't have to be this little thing that we made and like and when you increase the body of your work that story becomes more and more obvious yeah especially when you when you show the work too if if you're uh, you know you have your your your, spent, your pencil sketches you have your um Hey, this is my uh, design scope document. This is these are the pain points. These are the things I'm trying to alleviate. Things like that add so much to the story. I mean, yeah. literally and figuratively. But like that stuff's so juicy. Like I love I love reading that stuff, and I love thinking about how people work through problems. Like to me, that's the uh, that's that's where people really shine. That, that, yeah. That's a great example of someone doing a really good job of socializing their work. It's not just sharing that that final artifact, but taking people on the journey that you went through to discover the solution that works right now. Yeah, because so many people could just throw something up on like Dribble and uh, just copy somebody else's work on Dribble and go, "That looks nice. That's I guess that's what I need to do." Uh, yeah. I created this uh, pencil and a pencil sharpener. Look how cool that looks. I made that in Sketch. Ra ra ra. I'm pretty cool. Okay, well, why why did you do that? How did you get to that idea? You know, what 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 was the thing? What did the client tell you? What was their why why is it a pencil sharpener? What the yeah. what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, that, that journey and that story and that information is a lot more valuable than um, looking at a nice line like uh, like control of their pen. You know, like it, it, to understand how they met the need of their client or are trying to meet the need of their uh, viewer right user then that's a much more compelling story than um, look how beautiful it is well I, th I think that's a clear delineation of what design is design isn't that end result of something looks pretty design is solving a problem right and how did you solve that problem I want to know how you designed yeah yeah absolutely so uh, I think the, the the big question is where's uh, where's my invite for the uh, tin roof Meeting network. What's going on? I didn't get a, an email or a gold letter with one of those wax red stamps, you know, with like the TR in it, <laughs> like all Victorian and nice. I expect that in my mailbox. Do you want? Do you want to be part of the network? Yeah, yeah I, I believe I just blah 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 blah. blah. <laughs> I dressed up all pretty. I put bows on my hair. It took me an hour to do my hair. I put my nose hairs. I, I thought I looked presentable to get an invite. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Don't like, make me cry tonight. Like, I believe I, it's about that Santa Claus like, behind it. I like how you've evolved the show and where it is right now. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, yeah? Tell me. What do you mean? Yeah. Um, it was a little wild in the beginning. Uh, yeah. Right? I mean, we still have to. He's still a little wild now. I mean, it's good. There's no, <laughs> there's no reason, reason to, to tame Von, Von, what you tell Von Chuch. Von Frederick Chuch. Philip Von Weiss. I'm taking back the Von from my ancestors. <laughs> When they came over on the island, they were like, yeah, that sounds too weird. We don't want people looking at us funny. Right. <laughs> I mean, I just, just from the conversation that we had a year ago and from the conversation we're having now, I, I mean, there's a lot of, a lot of uh, you know, I'm not trying to sound condescending or anything, but like um, maturity that I can uh, like obviously see. Like you, you, you seem to be a lot more in control of where you're going and, and what you want. And that's exciting to see. Yeah, like, I'm, I'm happy for you, what, what you've been doing. Yeah, oh, thank you. Yeah, no, I, I think uh, condescending. I think um, you know, if if people take ego and they uh, they hold it precious, like no, I, I really appreciate what what you said there. That yeah. that's that's great. Thank you. What's that? Go ahead. Trust. I said I mean in the best way. Yeah. Oh yeah, no, and and I I definitely take it. I I really appreciate that. Yeah, we've um we've worked really hard on the show, and um we've worked hard on. Uh, getting the best guests that we could get to not only you know for us to to learn from, but for the audience. And I think that goes back to you know the whole community thing about us being able to provide people with uh, interesting takeaways and also you know um, selfishly for myself to get interesting takeaways and to learn from. And I think that's one of those things when you when you get that stuff, you don't keep it locked up. In your uh, skeleton closet, whatnot, but you you know you, you share that stuff out there with the world, and just just be open and honest, and just just talk to people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what I like is uh, uh, 
your show has an imbued in it a sense of experimentation for the design process, which is you put put something out there, you you watch, and then you take a response to it, and then you well move forward, right? Yeah. And so like, yeah, any yeah, of course, I love that. Yeah, so I'm I'm completely down. Um, send you a, a golden stamp with some wax on it. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds great. And, and, you know, I, I don't want to put you guys on the spot. I, you know, if you want to, you know, make me look bad in front of millions of people, that's fine too. Yeah. But you did already. Can I be No, and here's a, here's a, a like a thing that we've been doing with our with with the Tin Roof Media network is it's it's been all transparent yeah like hey here's an idea here's the opportunity we see um this is where we're at we're at with it and it's kind of been a stance that that we took early on that it's going to be an open an open process and we're going to talk to people and hopefully you know coming back to the sense of community if someone has an idea that they have it may not be a podcast network or whatever they get to see you know an idea hopefully come to fruition and yeah. so I think you illustrated that really well too by even having that whole show where or, or group of shows where you talk about it and you're even trying to find a domain name like through the whole <laughs> show like that process like you know there, there's a lot of uh, you know people that have gone through that conversation with their buddy or group of associates in a room like you know to hear that as an episode like that's that's awesome yeah <laughs> I'm gonna have to give that credit all the lows. <laughs> he he's really kind of um, <clears throat> stepped up and kind of just like spearheaded this whole initiative. Uh, in a lot of ways, it's, it's his uh, brainchild. And uh, that sh that show in particular, I was like, "Are you sure you want to?" <laughs> you know? And he was like, "Yep." And like that was it. And it, and it turned out like really, it turned out really good. It's something I'm proud of. Like like let, let's let's show people what. What swimming swimming through the swamps <laughs> to find a rose, you know, looks yeah, like. Yeah. <laughs> well, that that's all like what we were talking about, where you, people showing their work, or uh, to quote you again, getting to a good idea on the stack of bad ideas, right? Yeah, totally. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So that's uh, <laughs> so yeah yeah we'll talk we'll definitely not gonna talk about it here, but uh, yeah we'll talk we'll we'll talk and it, it'll be a it, it's looking good. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Okay, cool. I'm really excited about that. Honestly, I really am. I think that'd be that'd be really cool. Yeah, dude. All right, sweet, sweet. <laughs> so, is that how you guys and uh, we we talked to you a long time ago and we asked you this question uh, about that you didn't have sponsorship and uh, and now you you have fresh books and is right. that how you you started to that was like a, a phase one like let's let's start getting sponsors and let's let's start working that in. Yeah, yeah, I think it all works hand in hand, right? <laughs> like, if, if we want to uh, entreat new talent into our network, and we want to learn from them, and we want to experience what it's like to have like a, a more, uh, uh, you know, transactional partnership in that way, and, and 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 relationship with other people, like we have to bring something to the table, you know, and that's kind of like how that started. Um, yeah, so we went out and kind of. Again, Lowe's did most of the work. Actually, all the work, I guess. <laughs> but like, yeah, he like went out and he was like, "Look, we need to, we need to be legit about Tin Roof. So let's go find some sponsorships right now." And I was like, "Oh, okay." <laughs> <laughs> and, and also, too, that you've been reaching out to other shows like Cha Cha Cha, and um, you're you're even starting another show. Uh, what is it? Um, Discovered. Un right? un undiscovered. If we're undiscovered. Discovered, right. Yes. The, once, but well, once they're on Undiscovered, they're discovered. <laughs> Once on what right, it's like a, a catch twenty two. Once on once you make it onto undiscovered, you, you are discovered. <laughs> um, now the show is not <laughs> <about there. laughs> So how's that going? Uh, do you have some episodes oh. going? I, I couldn't find it anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> so here's the idea, right? The idea okay. is I need to learn how to get a show from nothing to at the top of the podcast app store. Like the, the podcast store way to do that is I think there's there's this hypothesis that if you uh, publish three episodes a week consecutively for eight to twelve weeks that it will naturally get to the top of like new and trending is that right that's right Dang. so it's a lot of work so the idea is to incubate podcasts under the travel notes moniker 
the undiscovered and these like secret shows, you know, kind of sprinkled throughout. Yeah, there's whole episodes randomly in our backlog. Yeah, yeah. And so, but the, the idea is to get them all out in Travel Lost as a production and learn by publishing live and then pull them off of the podcast and launch it as its own thing. Right? So the. Oh, I see. Okay. Is serving as a container for this idea. Um, and at the point when I have. 12, you know, whatever, three episodes a week for 12, so 24 episodes of Undiscovered. At that point, then it'll launch as its own thing. It really is like an incubator in a lot of ways because we can get feedback on it right now before we even, you know, technically publish that podcast. Yeah, yeah. And so, yeah, yeah so what, what happened is, you know, I had a, a, a new baby and that took up a lot of time. It's cute as hell. <laughs> Aw, love and, that. And then uh, and the, the network shows up, right? And so we're doing the network thing. And so we're in this kind of like middle land where I like the idea. I get excited about it. It, it brings energy to me when I'm, when I'm recording those type of episodes. Um, but it's kind of back burner right now to like kind of like build a home for it, mm -hmm. which is Tin Roof Media. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, you're kind of uh, organically building this up, and it will, it's, it, you know, it's it's going to come within time. But yeah, it's a it's a lot of planning and then um, execution. Yep, yep. And the idea is um, for Tin Roof to be more of like a like a Netflix for podcasting, where you kind of have these off the wall left ideas or you completely like eight episode weird stuff, but you know, internationally, you can find a good, uh, like a, a big audience for that idea or whatever. So I don't want to, I don't want to create a box for what Tim Roof Media is. I mean, we tend to have design as like our land uh, play, like people land on design, you know, we have design in Spanish, we have art bars, and Thunder Nerds is kind of like around that. Alex Strand is doing one of like up and coming. Yeah, I so love his, uh, like, his show. That sounds really cool. I didn't get a chance to listen to it yet though. Yeah, so it's all around design, right? But the goal is to expand into other realms and the way to do that is to incubate these, these different ideas. Um, landing as a design network, that's not the goal. And it's just kind of like first step. It being on the content of uh, yeah. design content. Yeah. 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 yeah it's definitely like a nice um, hub of going to, or it's going to be a nice hub of all these different flavors within design and uh slash development i i really yeah. love the idea and yeah i'm i'm definitely looking forward to that that uh <laughs> golden ticket invite i i i want that i'm, I'm looking forward to uh us yeah. being a part of that look here's the value that you bring that that is uh uh inspiring to me it's something that i that we can learn from is how organized you are at getting a show getting show notes following up and getting ahead of that and also doing the marketing that needs to be needs to happen the socializing mm -hmm. that needs to happen consistently so that it becomes at the forefront of an audience mind that this is something that's happening right and so right. so what you've what you've done like that is something of value that you can add and it's a value add a culture add that i'm looking for like i don't i don't like the idea of, of culture fit i like to look at it as culture add right because you, you, you it's always changing. You're always adding to a culture. There's no reason to fit into a culture. That's the point. Yeah. No, that makes sense. Well said. I like that a lot. Cool. Thanks, man. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, man. <laughs> <laughs> so we're getting uh, we're getting close to the end of the show. I know I had a bunch of different things that we could talk about in here, but I I guess we'll 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 do that next time. But yeah. uh, I, I I like to ask people in uh, a, a kind of closing question, and uh, since I got two of you guys, I want to save some room in here and some time to uh, to ask you both this question uh, individually, if, if if you'll entertain me with this. And uh, I think it's an interesting question. And the question is this: and uh, if, if you didn't do what you do now, and it couldn't be something with a computer, what would you be doing professionally? Uh, nice. I would be a farmer, my friend, an urban farmer. I would, I would create self-sustaining, uh, ecosystems where you have, um, all the vegetation or vegetables and fruit that you can grow throughout the seasons. And then I would create this symbiotic relationship between the cows and the chickens and the goats and the pigs and the food and everything would be kind of like this self-fulfilling cycle where nothing goes to waste and everyone uh, benefits off of each other and then what I would do is learn that grow it 
have a few people and then I would start building the self-sustaining uh, ecosystems in urban areas so people can kind of like stop uh, stop kind of pulling from the resources that are so limited and kind of like be, and start adding to them and kind of like take their carbon footprint out. I love that. It, and I, I hope you could see too how that ties back around to what we were talking about with with the network. There's a there's an allegory there. But yeah, that, I love that. That's that's great. Yeah. But what I need is Google though. So I kind of need a computer. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit, but you know what I mean. Yeah, no, I get it. <laughs> yeah. Rob, 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 what you got? Uh, uh, I was, I always had the plan to become a, a, a teacher at a high school. Yeah. Um, I always, I, I mean, maybe I like telling people what to do or what, to, <laughs> or what to think. I don't know. Um, or maybe like when I made that plan, I was a high schooler. So I thought, oh, high schoolers are cool. <laughs> um, I don't know what that is, but th that was like always a thing that, that never really happened. Um, but I think if if I was to make a decision today and it had to be away from tech, you know, uh, I would tr I would try my hand at, at fine art. I would like to paint and draw. Are you a uh, baroque guy? What what what's your thing? Are you surrealism? You a uh, Frida Kahlo? What what's going on? Um, n nothing like to. I mean, like urban is is pretty. I, I really enjoy people who can. Um, uh, who can create impressions of the things that are around them, but they're like just wildly distorted and that like stop and make you kind of like reconsider what it's like to be in that space. Um, just like maybe like graffiti art, for example, or urban paintings or watercolor. Uh, watercolor is something I've been, I've been doing a little lately. And oh, do, do you mind, do you mind those showing that, uh, that watercolor? Oh yeah. So we were talking about this before you, you, you stopped by Trav. Yeah, so for my 30th birthday, my wife wanted to do something special and put a comp like a book together of, of, of close friends and families that have had something uh, worthwhile or like a memory to share, right? And so, Tra so she asked Brit she, she asked Travis to make something or whatever what it was. Travis wrote something, but then he watercolored um, this beautiful portrait of a picture that I have. And so, if you are thinking about what would Travis be doing? You know, he'd be fi he'd be fine arting it for sure. Um, I, <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. That's a beautiful oh, picture, man. What is it called? You got the watercolor skills. Flooding right now. <laughs> look, look, I I, I I like it. Um, I like the way it makes me feel yeah. because it makes me feel contemplative and uh, and a little bit in control. Um, and I like that. And also, you have to release control a little bit. You know, yeah. like what, whatever this line will be, it will be. And yeah. That's that's something that's really therapeutic for me. Um, if you want to know more about like the art that I have been creating, that my Instagram is just kind of just my art feed lately. Oh, okay, nice. Yeah, we'll put a link in the show notes to that. Yeah, that's awesome. You should. It's cool. All right. Yeah, definitely will. <laughs> All right. Well, hey guys, we're getting to the uh, the very end. I was wondering if you have any kind of closing. Uh, comments, suggestions, anything you want to tell our audience before we jet? Um, you know, the other day um, I got an email. Maybe this is too too much, guys. <laughs> like, I got an email. This guy said, uh, "Hey, uh, there's there's this job that's going to pay me, and and there's that option, and then there's this other thing I want to do, and it was like design or art or whatever it was." And he goes, "Travis, what should I do?" I get this kind of email a lot, and. Um, I was thinking about it, and I think if it might be appropriate to share to this audience. Um, <clears throat> I said, I said to him, the first thing you need to do is decide what your values are. And if you discover those, then you can easily make a decision. You know, if you if you like, it's not a problem. It's not bad to value comfort and to value stability and to value a way to provide. That's not a bad thing at all. Also, it's not a bad thing to value self-expression over those things, but it just depends on what you value. And a lot of times in, in design, they'd be like, if I wasn't doing this, kind of like the, the answer, the question that we just answered, right? Like, like I do this because I have to, because it's in me and I have to bring it out. But really I think a more, a better question is, is like, like, what are your values? And, um, and like, how can you be honest with yourself? And that was just kind of like my answer to him. I think that kind of, I've been thinking about it lately. Well, that I think that also goes back to the whole uh, "what is happiness" episode, right? Which is purpose and um, 
Pleasure. Yeah. Pleasure. Yeah. If you really enjoy something and you could find purpose in that, then that equates to happiness. And it's it, it's it sounds so simple, but it's 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 also very obvious when you think about it, isn't yeah. it? So in that episode, I talked about like there was like this um, worksheet to do, like a grid, and you could fill out the event and how did it score on pleasure, how did it score on purpose, and how did it score on happiness. And I did that. I created a Google Doc and I, I tracked myself for like about a week and I wrote down like every kind of like event that I did. Like I played with my child, uh, I turned in this project, or I you know whatever I did. And then I would kind of rate it, and and it turns out that the things that have the highest intersection of pleasure and uh, purpose are are with community, with family, community, and giving, and things like that. Yeah, and you're you're definitely following that track. All makes sense. <laughs> um, so I'll, I'll I'll leave something here for the audience, which is kind of like um, using part of what you said, Travis. Is Travis to discover your values, right? <laughs> what a lot of people don't do is take time to think. The way to discover a value is you need to sit down and you need to be pensive, you need to be uh, purposeful with thought, right? And it's so easy for social media to distract us and for kind of the, the day to day to eat up at your time and then you are reactive to life instead of being um, proactive, responsive. right? Responsive, right? So kind of take, take a time, slow it down, grab your calendar right now and set an hour to think and just stop everything else and take that time to think and it'll be more fruitful if you have something to think about. Yeah. Um, but it's okay to sit and think and slowly over time be more pur purposeful with your thought. And that's a great way to make sweeping changes in your life for whatever yeah. reason. It's so easy to come home and grab a uh, Michelob light and watch uh, <laughs> Dancing with the Stars and let your heart die and re <laughs> repeat Monday through Tuesday. But if you actually you know, want to make a change, you have to be the change, right? You have to, no one, no one's going to do these things for you. You have to seek these things out for yourself. You can't, if, if you are very comfortable playing the victim and take that how, however you will, but you know, oh, it's my boss. Oh, it's this. Oh, it's my job. Oh, it's where I live. There's nothing in this town. You know, sure. Maybe some of those things are to a point accurate or you know you could possibly entertain them uh, a little bit but for the most part it's 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 a slight uh cup of bullshit because it's it's really about you you know you 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 make your own universe you th this is all you know you have control neo do you know bend the spoon it's it's all about what you want to do yeah yeah it's easy to be uh, a victim of circumstance yes right um, or, you, or deny circumstance outright. Or deny circumstance outright, right? Um, look, uh, ask, ask, stop for a moment and ask yourself the question, you know, like, am I like, going to allow whatever is happening around me to define who I am? And that's just a question you can ask and kind of I'll just leave it, leave it there because you can find your own answer, right? Yeah, uh, it's, it's about um, is it environment? Is it, you know, what you're born with? Is it epigenetics? Or uh, can you actually take take charge, take the rain, like like that Santa Claus behind you grabbing the reindeer? Oh, this guy right here. <laughs> grabbing the something. He's grabbing the something. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Well, hey, guys, thank you so much for being on the show. Super, super appreciate it. Love you guys. Love listening to the show. Um, it's it's been a pleasure, Trav, and your boy Lowe's. <laughs> yeah, likewise, it's been a great time. Thank you for yeah. having us. Thanks for having us. This was really cool. I had a good time. Oh, thanks, guys. Super appreciate it. Looking forward to that letter.